Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. It's Wednesday, that sounds about right. Sorry, we had a public holiday. I'm, I'm lost on what day it is. Anyways, this episode of Hot News is brought to you by a podcast that I'm actually starting with my wife called Off The Trail. One of the things that I feel like I just kind of need to get out of my system as a content creator is that like my life is separate from like the tech stuff we do here on UFD Tech. So I wanted to create a medium for expressing that. And so my wife and I recorded a podcast live over on Twitch on Saturday and it's uploaded for you guys. So if you wanna check it out, if you're interested at all behind the scenes in my life, what it is to be a full-time content creator, how to manage a family and full-time work on top of that and just everything that can go into that, that's the idea behind the podcast called Off The Trail. Links for that will be in the description. It would mean a lot if you guys would check it out in, in case you're interested. So thanks so much. Now let's jump into the hot news. First, let's talk about something that uh, Qualcomm is embroiled in with Apple, which is accusing them of leaving them unceremoniously. So this is a bad marriage gone wrong between Qualcomm and Apple because Apple was using Qualcomm for the longest time, but then they switched over to Intel chips for their setup. And it looks like Qualcomm is stating that Apple not only swap, swapped over to Intel in a way that wasn't necessarily legal, but they could only do so but because they stole some of the IP that Qualcomm had and gave it to Intel so that Intel can make the chips that Qualcomm was making, or at least the same quality. So this is some serious heavy accusations that are coming from Qualcomm in a court filing that's just, this is, this is exciting because, I mean, Apple is in lawsuits all the time. They're suing Samsung. They're suing all these other companies. Just It's just this battle for IP. But this one by Qualcomm, I think, is a step beyond not only stealing company secrets from Qualcomm, but then giving it to their rivals because the rivals can't make the chips that Apple needs, but Apple wants to go with them either for better pricing or for support in other areas. Let's say if they use Intel's mobile uh, chips, then they'll actually get better support on the MacBook line. It could be a business deal like that. This is something insane. The allegations are contained in a complaint that Qualcomm hopes the court will amend to its existing lawsuit against Apple for breaching the so-called master software agreement that Apple signed when it became a customer of Qualcomm's earlier this decade. Rip. We'll see where this goes. We'll keep you updated. This is kind of hot news. Apple in some hot water, maybe even Intel, unless they didn't know that it was company secrets from Qualcomm, which I mean, they would have had to have known. Somebody in that department had to have known. So this is a lot of heavyweights going at it in the legal department. We'll see if there's any merit to it coming out, but this is cool. I liked it. Moving on. Next, some interesting information for you mini ITX lovers out there and just other people as well, just in case you didn't know. Asus is announcing a double capacity dim slot form factor for their motherboard. So this is actually going to go on their Z390 Maximus 11 Extreme, as we see in this leak right here. This DIM.2 4 factor is so that they can max out the memory uh, allocation for uh, normal consumer desktop chips on only two slots. So you can get 32 gig DIM sticks on this double capacity DIM for it to be 32 gigs each. You can get 64 gigs of RAM with only two slots, which is great for mini ITX systems for people who want powerhouses. It's also an interesting implementation of the DIM.2 slot that Asus has had for a while on their other motherboards, but those have only typically been used for uh, M.2 riser cards. But this is, this is kind of interesting. I like it. It's only on the high-end boards as far as we can see. The mini ITX ones that we saw that were revealed for their Z390 boards haven't don't have this slot, but it's cool. It's cool. It's a cool implementation. I'm looking forward to it. Saturating the memory amounts with only a couple of sticks. Currently, they have partners with Zadak and G-Skill to make these memory modules. So we'll see how this goes. As you see right here, this Trident Z RGB is double capacity. So that means that it can get up really high and then you have a ton of RAM. I like this Asus. Good job. Good partners. Zadak making RGB RAM. They had the first RGB SSD in case you didn't know. That's neither here nor there. And then as you see in this article, there are new leaks on Z390 motherboards, the Maximus 11 Extreme and the Maximus 11 Gene. And then in a previous hot news, we showed off all of the other ones. So well done. Good job, Asus. This is kind of cool. 
Speaking of Z390 though, now we have some information from Silicon Lottery as to the potential pricing of the upcoming Coffee Lake refresh chips. In case you don't know, Silicon Lottery is a website where they bin the CPUs that they get and then sell them at a markup. Binning meaning that they've tested and verified that these CPUs can hit a specific frequency such as this 8086K right here. It's $530 because they can guarantee that it can hit 5.2 gigahertz at a particular voltage of 1.425 volts. So that's pretty good, pretty good. So they sell it at a premium to normal chips because of that and they've listed, they were caught listing the i7-9700K and the i9-9900K. 9700K coming in at $370, the 9900K coming at $480. If these are binned, then that means that we could expect a price of around 300 and 350 for the 9700K and around 400 to 450 for the 9900K. Although it is possible that they're not binned, but I think that would defeat the whole business model of Silicon Lottery. So we'll have to see if that's the actual price like 350, 450, that's actually not too bad. Like if Intel sells the 9700K at 350 and the 9900K at 450, kind of worth, kind of worth in my opinion. Eight cores, eight threads, 9700K, eight cores, 16 threads on the 9900K. You get the fast CPUs out on the market because it's not gonna be fundamentally different than Coffee Lake. It's just gonna be a fast chip. That's exciting, I'm okay with this. That pricing doesn't scare me. And then Z390 also launching sometime <laughs> soon. No announcement on the release date yet, so we'll just have to keep you posted on that. But pricing looking good, pretty good. Then we got some news for you millennial people. In case you wanted to vote, Snapchat and Tinder are teaming up with nonprofits to actually bring voter registration to you within the app, which is neat. It's cool that they're trying to get it for the, the millennials, but as I was talking to Tank earlier, voter registration isn't really the major problem that we have in the US. Maybe it is amongst the younger age groups, but for my generation and the older generation, it's kind of just the fact that why do we vote on a Tuesday? Who's gonna take work off on a Tuesday? Why do we do it in November? Oh, because it was designed to be after the fall harvest so that people could actually have time off to go vote. Why are we still using antiquated voting timing based on the 1700s? Let's actually make it on a weekend so that everybody can do it. Obviously you still run into issues like with the previous election where people didn't really like the choices so the voter turnout was lower even though we have a butt ton of registered voters who just chose not to vote. That makes it difficult. So we need quality candidates and we need better timing for the voting, not, not Snapchat. Sorry. Although this is good, this is good. It's reaching the it's reaching the younger people. Speaking of bringing things to people who are of the younger generation or of a lesser generation. Yeah, I'm going with that segue. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep that one. Razer and Microsoft are announcing a partnership to bring keyboard and mouse support to the Xbone, which great. Like, it, that's like cavemen discovering fire for the first time. It's just like, yeah. We're, we're all here in the 21st century using fake lights and you're just now discovering fire. Congrats console people. You get to play uh, with keyboard and mouse. Proud of you, keep it up. Razer, I'm glad that you're the company to do this, but I, holy crap, this should have been done ages ago. Like why can't you play with a keyboard and mouse on a console? That doesn't make any sense. It needs to be wireless because the whole point of a console is the TV experience, at least in my opinion. So you need good quality wireless stuff, but Corsair has been bringing out good stuff. Razer has some good stuff. This an inevitable development. I'm happy that it's happening now. PlayStation's never gonna do this because they believe that they're the best experience. And so they're never gonna try to do anything that could actually promote more people to enjoy their experiences because they're just the best and they don't need to change. Salt's coming out, PlayStation. I love your games, but I hate your attitude. Speaking of gaming and money and console peasants. Pokemon Go just hit $2 billion in revenue. That's a lot of cheddar. That, that, that's a lot of nuts. I'll tell you what, I don't, I don't have more to say than that, but that's, that's a lot of money for a game that's not even real. Then our good friends over at Fantex, which we saw this at Computex, is announcing their Metallic Gear line of cases and they're bringing out the Neo series, which this is supposed to be the budget option of Fantex so that people who want Fantex quality and Fantex looks without paying the Fantex price tag, can do that. Obviously, it's not exactly cheap. This Neo right here is going for 90 pounds. This Neo Micro is going for 75 pounds. And then this Neo Mini is going for 70 pounds. Not cheap cases by any means, but definitely cheaper than something like the Evolve, which goes for at least, what, 150, 160? I don't know the price of the Evolve. At least it's not going for the price of the Evolve. So save money, Fantex quality, aluminum, tempered glass, all that good stuff. Everything that's retro. 
or not retro, everything that's in, that's hip, that's for the millennials. Then some interesting news coming out of the server market. It appears that HP's enterprise platform is switching over to AMD instead of Intel because of Intel's supply constraints. So that's that makes this pretty, pretty a big move because Dell has uh, Dell has 19.5% of the market share. HP has about 15% of the entire server market. So that is that is a major shift right there. We were talking about it in yesterday's hot news that analysts expect that AMD might take 30% market share with moves like this with HP switching over to AMD. That looks to be a very quick reality that could happen sooner rather than later. So good job AMD, good job HPE get in the competition hot and fierce rather than dull and stagnant. Speaking of companies working together, Panasonic, Leica, and Sigma are all working together on a brand new mount for their cameras as well as their lenses called the L mount, which is going to be for full frame as well as APS-C cameras because Panasonic announced yesterday that they're gonna be bringing out a full frame mirrorless camera and then uh, Fujifilm announced that they're gonna be bringing out a uh, medium format mirrorless camera. So big cameras coming out mirrorless so that they're light and then companies working together for lenses. I care about this. I don't know if you guys do. Let me know, do you care about camera news at all? Reese goes ham for this kind of stuff. So I hear about it all day. I, I, I like it, but I don't know if you guys do. So let's find out. Now for this next little news, I'm promising I'm not gonna be salty at all. No salt zone, you got this right now. Nvidia announced the release date of the RTX 2070 saying that it is going to be coming out on October 17th and they're quoting a price of $500, 499 and then the Founders Edition will cost $599, so $600. So $600 for a card that we are expecting to perform on par with the GTX 1080, but then it also has the ray tracing and deep learning super sampling experience on top of that, that should come out to games sometime soon. No word on the GTX 2060, RTX 2060, or anything low end right now. It just appears that we now have the announcement date of the RTX 2070 with them revealing it on Twitter yesterday. Hashtag graphics reinvented. Let's go. And that's gonna wrap it up for all the hot news that we have today. What do you think of the new Intel CPU prices? What do you think of Nvidia launching the 2070? And what, I mean, console peasants finally getting keyboard and mouse support. What's, what's your take on that? Let me know down in the comments. I'm curious, I'm keen, let's chat. Don't forget that the podcast thing I did with my wife, check it out, link in the video description. Much appreciated. Anyways, like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you like this stuff and you want more, do that. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too. Bam! Knock that one around the park. Let's go. Got it right. I got it right. Woo!